Sir, could you please start now? Y yes, ma'am. Thank you. So, uh, I think I'm audible, right, ma'am? Yeah, sir, you're audible. Okay, okay. Very good. Okay, a uh, uh, very good afternoon to all the respected team members of NPTEL IIT Madras and to the whole college faculty students who have joined this particular awareness workshop on uh, SOIM NPTEL courses. So, uh, firstly, we, the college fraternity, would heartily welcome a respected resource person who will be enlightening us about in details the workshops and the further courses which are being provided by NAPTU, NPTEL, National Program for Technology Enhanced Learning. So it's indeed a very great opportunity for the whole college fraternity of Progressive College, including both the faculties and students, because in this new digital era, and, and with the implementation of National Education Policy 2020, where digital learning has opened up a new genre for the academic fraternity, especially with the learners from these areas of Assam and the Northeast especially. We always have been feeling deprived of getting ourselves or learning from the reputed institutions across India and abroad. But now, with the uh, initiative from the government of India under the platform of SOYAN and with the technological enhancement from the NPTA, it has somewhat become very easy. And the learning basically has come in the tip of our hand. And it's we are just a click away from learning. So similarly, along with the NPTEL members and SOYAM, we, Prakjotis College, as the local chapter, enrolled on 2023, at the 12th October, we are very happily and readily and enthusiastically welcoming this particular initiative. And we are very much actively awaiting to get participated in this particular programs of NPTEL that is along with SOYAM. To, to say a few words of Prakjotis College. Prakjotis College, with the dynamic leadership of our respected principal, Sir Dr. Manoj Kumar Mohanta, it has always been the vision of making college for the students, by the students, and of the students. With the mission of to make teachers and thought partners in the learning process, and to promote a student-friendly atmosphere for encouraging them to be self reliant and self-employment. It has been the mission. Talks to this college, established on 1st of September 1954, seven years after the independence of India, it has always become a center, a beacon of learning and a symbol of aspiration for the common people of Assam, ready to build a new nation. Pandit Tirthanath Sharma, the eminent scholar in literature, responded to and actively participated in the nation building taking charge as the founder principal of Praxis College. From its modest inception as an arts college, Praxis College has now developed into one of the premier institutions of higher education in Guwahati and for the Northeast as well, and as well as for the neighboring countries that is Bhutan, Nepal, and Myanmar and all. <clears throat> it is situated on the western bank of Karolu, a rivulet in the western part of Guwahati. Praxis College is just a kilometer away from its confluence with the mighty Brahmaputra. It is about four kilometers from the railway station, that is the Guwahati railway station, and a distance of about only 15 kilometers from the Lokopriya Gopinath Bordolai International Airport. It has a very uh, scenic panoramic view of the Nilachal Hills, the famous abode of mother goddesses Kamakya. So this particular college, which has always been promoting a valuable, an enthusiastic, a dynamic learning pro opportunity for the students. So with this particular workshop and the courses that have been provided by the SOIM, we hope the students, along with our faculty members, get enhanced, get enthralled, and be very much 
really to join the forces so that we can enhance our learning skills as this particular platform of Soyam, it's along with NPTEL, has brought things and made us things very easier to us. So I hope uh, with the agenda of today, that is at the, the deliberation from the resource person, it will be followed by a QA session that is question and answer session, wherein all the participants may kindly uh, promptly give their questions and ask for any uh, queries in the chat box of the link, YouTube link that is being provided. And the particular questions will be answered by the team members from IIT Madras itself. And at the last, we will be providing a feedback link wherein with the uh, filling of the feedback, the feedback form, all the participants, basically the faculties, will be provided with an e-certificate. So with this, I conclude my introduction and I very much welcome the research person and I uh, <coughs> offer my heartful thanks uh, for the deliberation which she will be providing at the initial stage as well. So with this, I conclude my introduction and we, in the next stage, we will be going for the deliberation from the resource person. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome to this workshop on NPTEL, the National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning. Through this set of videos, we would like to give you a brief introduction to what the NPTEL project is about, what we uh, offer as courses there, how do you get certificates from NPTEL, from the various IITs, IACs and other institutes that offer courses through NPTEL and all the other allied initiatives uh, of NPTEL which are like the internships, the faculty development program, uh, local chapters, the soft skill training, etc. So we will walk you through each of these one by one going forward in the videos that come. So about NPTEL, NPTEL is one of the longest running successful multi-institutional education projects. So it was started in the year 2003 and we complete 20 years of the NPTEL project this year in 2023. Uh, NPTEL is also one of the largest repositories of engineering content in the world. Uh, the vision of NPTEL is to provide high quality affordable education at scale. So this is more a project where we are giving access to the content that is taught within the premier institutes such as the IITs, IISC and other institutes such as say CMI, IMSC, ICERS, the IIITs, etc. to anybody who is motivated and wishes to study this particular content. It is completely free. The access to all the content is available on our website nptel.ac.in and here are some numbers just to say how popular and widely used NPTEL is. The NPTEL videos are all uh, available on YouTube, our channel NPTEL HRD. We have more than 60,000 hours of video content, which is primarily engineering, humanities and management content on NPTEL. The viewership for this has crossed about 1.6 billion views so far. And we have more than about 3,000 courses in our repository. And the YouTube subscriber base is more than 4.5 million. Uh, you should just remember this is not any entertainment content we are giving out but this is like a very rigorous a high quality engineering management and content from the sciences division that we are putting out on our channels and the NPTEL repository. So uh, like I said it can be accessed from anywhere for free there is no charge no payment required to access any of the content that is available on the NPTEL website. Anybody can uh, view this content from anywhere around the world at any time. So basically it's like an online reference library, you can think of it like that, where we have more than 3000 subject books available in the form of video lectures. No login is also required, we don't capture your login details unless absolutely essential, so you can actually do a free browsing of the entire content that we have on our website. There are search facilities where you can search for specific courses by institute, by discipline, etc. So what does a, a course typically contain on NPTEL? We'll also look into another aspect of it, which is the certification courses. But on the website, 
each course primarily will have of course the syllabus of the course uh, whatever is being taught in that course then there'll be video lectures that are part of the that will be the primary content of the course the text transcripts every video is transcribed and subtitled so these are also available as notes in pdf format for you to download and read so there are text transcripts that are available there are notes that are given whatever the faculty has used maybe during the recording of the course or as additional reading material notes are provided to the learners in most courses wherever applicable sample assignments along with solutions have also been archived so you can also check after completing a week's content whether you are able to handle the assignment and whether you are able to answer the questions given there uh, many of the courses are now being translated into regional indian languages so the transcripts are also available and translated into other languages such as hindi tamil kannada malayalam and so on so the effort is ongoing wherever it is available it is also available inside the course on the portal the transcripts are available and the statistics for courses that we run for certification are also available under each course as a tab called statistics where you can see how many times we ran the course how many people enrolled how many people got certified who are the toppers in this course and so on so this is the content we have primarily on the nptel website we offer more than 1400 courses per year for certification so one part is the repository where you can just access think of it as a library you go and you watch videos you learn for yourself but if you want to take a certificate in any particular course from nptel we also offer these courses for certification okay we are a partner of swayam the swayam.gov.in the national mooks portal of india and we offer courses for certification on this portal more than 1400 courses are offered every year for certification in two semesters january semester and the july semester let's look at the relationship between nptel and swayam uh, nptel was a project started in 2003 primarily for content creation and in 2014 we started offering courses for certification in 2017 uh, the ministry of education launched the swayam portal which is the national mooks portal of india so under the swayam portal there are 10 coordinators for various verticals of education nptel is the national coordinator for engineering education primarily both the ug and the pg levels uh, nptel also takes care of the technical maintenance of the swayam portal getting in new features and seeing that the portal uh, runs very smoothly without any glitches all through the year so uh, what has been nptel's uh, certification journey since 2014 again here are some numbers that you can see for yourself the number of certification courses that we have completed on swayam so far is 5372 courses offered for certification the enrollment till june 2023 has been 2.3 crores more than 28.6 lakh learners have registered to write the certification exams and more than 18.8 lakh learners have been certified by nptel so far now what are the components of a certification course and uh, how does it typically work right this is what is normally called as a massive open online course or a mooc but of course in nptel we also have uh, specialized pg level phd level courses which are not necessarily massive but of course they also do have 300 400 learners in it and who follow the course and complete the examinations in it so the typical content that we would offer as part of an nptel certification course is first primarily the video content so the videos are recorded by faculty in the premier institutes like we already said so that would be about maybe 10 to 12 hours if it is a four week course uh, we have an eight week course duration so it could be about 20 to 23 25 hours there and a 12 week course duration which could uh, where the content could be between 30 to 40 hours so the primary will be the video lectures by the faculty who also has been teaching this course within the institute and is an expert in this particular area so that is the first part of the certification course the second most important part of the certification course will be weekly assignments so in every course of nptel every single week we have assignments that we give as part of that week so the learner is expected to watch the video lectures and attend the assignments assignments can be of different types 
we have something called auto graded assignments where it could be just a multiple choice question a multiple select questions where the question has more than one possible answer there could be short answer uh, questions or fill in the blank type of questions where a problem may be given you have to solve the problem and enter the answer onto the uh, portal it could be something where you have to enter one word or maybe a phrase or something which is again auto corrected so these are the kind of auto graded questions we have the second type of assignments we have are programming assignments so programming assignments are normally used in courses where the learners require to program so these are also auto graded and the portal currently supports c c++ python java verilog haskell programming the portal supports all these languages uh, for auto graded programming assignments so the learner will have to submit a program there is something called a private test case and a public test case and based on the input output system the learner gets marks for these programming assignments so all the programming courses we run actually have hands on programs that have to be written as part of the course assignment the weekly assignment that we give the third type of assignment that we have is subjective assignments which are manually graded so in this case the learner might have to uh, maybe write an essay and submit it or maybe will have to do some kind of a design document maybe some derivations some proofs they have to uh, write it or type it on a, a document and they have to upload the document the faculty and their team of uh, teaching assistants manually validate these and then they mark the assignments for subjective assignment category of uh, questions the fourth type that we have is peer reviewed uh, assignments where a submission by a learner is normally reviewed by the other students in the same course so they do peer reviews and they rate each other's work and the final result is based on what the others feel about your assignment so these are the type of assignments and assignments are very very important in an nptel course because the assignments also contribute to your final exam score if you're going to write the exam as well as there is a cutoff you have to cross to get the certificate for an nptel course okay uh, the third component that is there in an nptel certification course is text transcripts there might be some lab demos that we are doing if it is a theory course that has an associated lab we might have shot some experiments in the laboratory and also put it there for your reference that you can actually watch what is happening in the labs as the experiments are being performed that is one part so text transcripts are actually uh, documents where we have transcribed the videos completely and we are providing it to you as reading material so maybe once you have watched the video and you want to kind of just refresh and brush up on what has been taught the text transcripts are a useful way of doing it or those people who like to read maybe rather than watch can also go through the transcripts on whatever the faculty has taught in the videos uh, the other important component that we have is the discussion forum this is very very important because this is the connection through which you can communicate with the faculty and team or with your peers in the course so there is a discussion forum in every course if you have doubts you can ask on the discussion forum and normally within 24 hours there will be somebody who is turning around and giving you the answers to the questions if somebody asks a question maybe your peer in the group is asking questions and you know the answers to that you can also answer in the discussion forum so this is a very good way in which you can actually showcase your written communication skills and your knowledge in the subject also by helping your friends and maybe asking and getting your doubts cleared the last part is live interaction sessions in many courses we have uh, pmrf scholars who are nowadays doing live sessions uh, teaching sessions doubt clearing sessions as part of it it's a weekly session that we are enabling a two hour duration in at least about 250 to 300 courses where you can participate and you can also interact with them and many times the faculty also come in for a live session maybe once a month or so where you can also interact with the faculty member offering the course uh, to discuss the various aspects of the course so these are the five components that comprise an nptel certification course uh, the final exam though we conduct the entire course and the program online and all you need to access the course is maybe a mobile phone a computer and definitely an internet connection the final exam that we conduct for an nptel certification course if you want to get a certificate from nptel you will have to write it at centers within the 
country that is something that you have to do so the entire course run happens on swayam.gov.in you have to go there you choose a course and you enroll to a course there there is a start date for the course on that day the materials will start getting released every friday we release about maybe two and a half to three hours of uh, videos uh, we release every friday along with the assignment discussion forum will be live you can ask questions during that so this will happen during the duration of the course so duration of the course is four weeks eight weeks or 12 weeks every friday we release content which is videos and the assignment from the beginning of the course itself there is an exam form that is open and available for you to register to the final exam in case you want to take up a certificate from nptel you have to register to the exam the enrollment on the swayam portal is completely free there is no fee to be paid if you want to just enroll you want to learn you want to watch videos you want to do assignments you want to ask questions all these are free there is no fee for it if somebody says that you have to pay money please do not believe them the project is completely funded by the ministry of education and we are very thankful to them for having supported us for this long and hence the entire content access during the certification course is free but if you want to write the exam and be certified there is a cost to it because we use an exam partner for the same so these exams are conducted at specific centers in about 170 180 cities across the country in india okay so you have to go and write the exam in person at any of these cities whichever you choose on the exam date so the exam dates are fixed for every course it is given on the uh, course page itself you can go and check it out on that day you will have to take your hall ticket and go to the exam center that we allocate to you and write the exam there so the course fee is rupees 1000 per course exam that you want to write uh, there are 50% uh, waivers available for students belonging to select categories such as the SCST and PWD categories okay once you pass the course and you are eligible for the certificate I will talk about the certification criteria in the next slide you will get a certificate from the IITs or the ISC or the institute that is offering a course okay I will show you the format also very soon these certificates are e-verifiable which means that there is a QR code printed on the certificate and anybody who scans the QR code can see the original from our server from our website to validate the certificate so that is something that's there we are not doing a hard copy dispatch there's only soft copies that we will make available to you of the certificates we are also conducting exams outside of India we have centers in many countries currently and those we don't have we also conduct remote proctored online exams so if you are a learner from outside India please write to this email ID given here and share your details we will also revert with how you can take the exam with us so learners across the globe today can get certified from NPTEL directly by doing the certification exams with us there is no need to go to any other portal many portals we have seen are hosting NPTEL courses and charging a lot of money for that and giving their own certificates it is not allowed this is the authentic form of NPTEL certification where we run our courses on the Swayam portal and we conduct exams from our side so I would urge that all learners actually make use of this facility where we have exams throughout India and we conduct exams for learners outside India also to get certificates from the IITs and the IAC. So what is the certification criteria if you want to get a certificate for any NPTEL course right that is something that's there so basically the first step you go through all the courses for a particular semester then you shortlist which all courses you want to do and you join it the joining is free so we would recommend that you even join like maybe five or six or ten courses because once the enrollment date is over you cannot join any course after that so maybe five or ten courses if you join you can see which course suits you best and then you can decide on what you want to pursue through the semester that is step one then the content starts getting released assignment gets released go through the content go through the assignments see which course is very amenable to you accessible to you which course keeps your interest you would have had some thought of okay i want to learn all of this from this course whether it matches your goal of learning check that and maybe shortlist it down to one or two courses that you want to do during the semester so week on week keep studying watch the videos keep submitting the assignment before the deadline so normally assignment we give 10 days of time 
Wednesday night or Thursday night, there are deadlines for the assignments in the courses. The date will be given on the assignment page. Please check that and submit the assignments before the deadlines. And once you're confident, maybe you've done uh, two or three weeks of content in the course, at that point, the exam form is accessible to you already. There is a link on the course page which will say register now for the exam. Click on it and you can register for the exam. So we would suggest that you try out maybe one or two weeks of content, see whether it is okay for you and then register for the exam. The exam uh, form also has some deadlines. The deadlines are all given on the exam form and on the announcements in the announcement uh, section of the course. Please go through that and before the due date, kindly register to the exams. And like I said, you will come in person to write the exam. Okay. Having done all this, now how do you get your certificate? What is the criteria? Is it that you just do the course and get the certificate or all those who appear for the exam are going to get a certificate? No, we do have a certification criteria as shown in this slide. Okay. So the final score for the course that we calculate there is 25% weightage for the weekly assignments and 75% weightage for the final exam that you write at the center. This is a normal thing. Maybe a few courses we might change the pattern a little bit based on the nature of the course. But broadly, this is what we follow across all NPTEL courses. And the pass criteria, if you have to get a certificate from us is average assignment score. Okay, average assignment score should be more than 10 out of 25 and your exam score you should score more than 30 out of 75 it's an and condition so both conditions should be satisfied and final score automatically becomes more than 40 out of 100 okay how do we calculate the average assignment score uh, average assignment score we take the best three out of four assignments for a four week course the best six out of eight assignments for an eight week course the best eight out of 12 weeks for a 12 week course okay so we'll take the uh, best scores we will average it out that's called your average assignment score and that that is what should be more than 10 out of 25 and uh, exam score uh, what even if the paper is out of 50 marks or 100 marks depending on whatever it is configured for we'll convert it out of 75 and you should get more than 30 in that okay and there are types of certificates also that we give. We also categorize the type of certificate based on what final marks you get. So if you get any mark between say 40 to 59, there is only called successful completion of the course. That is the certificate we give you. Let me show you the certificate. Maybe that is better. And this is the format of the certificate that we give. As you can see here, there is the NPTEL logo on the left. The right bottom has the Swayam logo here. The institute name and institute logo will come on the bottom left. There are signatories from the institute and NPTEL also on the certificate. Your photo that you give us on the exam form will actually appear on the top right. So please give us a good photo that you want to put on the certificate that the IITs, IIS issue you. And there are a couple of other parameters like you can see here. There is a tag called elite at the top. There is a gold medal symbol that you can see here. Uh, we also mentioned the assignment score and the exam score that you have got here along with of course the course name and the number of students who have appeared for the exam and passed it. Okay, At the bottom there is a QR code which on scanning will actually show you the original certificate from our server. So going back now that you have seen this LE tag and gold medal. You can see here that 40 to 59 we only call it a successful completion certificate. If you get more than 60 marks, you get the tag called elite at the top of the certificate. If you have between 75 and 89 marks, then you get a silver medal that is printed on your certificate and you have more than 90, uh, between 90 and 100, you get a gold medal printed on your certificate. We also have categories for toppers in the course. Uh, depending on the number of people certified in the course, we also have toppers. So it could be up to one topper, two toppers, five toppers, one percent topper, two percent topper and so on. So if you're a topper in the course, there will also be one seal that comes on the certificate which says that you are a topper in the course. Now let's go to some numbers on how NPTEL has been growing over the last couple of years. Like I said, this NPTEL certification effort was started in 2014. In that year, we just did three courses. The total enrollment was 1 lakh 
and uh, 3000 people registered for the exams and that is where we were but if you look at 2022 which is last year you can see we offered more than 1200 courses 40 lakh enrollment overall and we had 7.58 lakh right exams this is for two semesters of 2022 but basically it is good to see that NPTEL has been becoming popular amongst the various uh, learner bases which is students in colleges faculty members in colleges uh, working professionals people who wish to upskill and reskill among all segments this uh, these certification courses from NPTEL definitely seems to be catching up and people seem to be learning and benefiting from this initiative okay what are the kind of courses that we offer if you go to any popular MOOCs portal you'll see that many times they only offer the uh, very popular courses they don't offer uh, all courses in all disciplines for instance if there are maybe only 10 people taking up a particular course they may not be offering it because they do not have a subsidy model but NPTEL has the advantage that the Ministry of Education is funding us for this entire project because of which we are even able to offer very specialized courses courses at the PhD level where there might be only a small number of takers for the course and so on and hence as you can see we have courses in every single discipline of engineering that are definitely offered as well as humanities, management, a little bit of law courses and medical sciences, health sciences close courses. So as you can see there are about 683 courses in the mechanical engineering guard division, 662 in the computer science, 668 in the electrical engineering and so on. The numbers all given here but you can see the variety of courses that we offer in every discipline. So I think we are very confident if somebody comes to the portal. I think they will definitely find a couple of courses that they would like to learn. If you are in engineering, it is a 100% match I would say you will find something new, something interesting, something which is at the cutting edge of technology, something that is absolutely current that you will be able to learn. And even if you are not an engineering person, the number of courses we offer on the management and humanity side is very very vast for instance we have courses that teach you German language there are three parts to it German 1, German 2, German 3 then we have Sanskrit language course we have a Japanese language course and then we have courses on soft skill training spoken English business English there is a technical English for engineers course that uh, goes on there are courses on marketing management on entrepreneurship there is financial management basic commerce uh, that is there there is something on IP and patents. So these are very generic that kind of cut across domains anybody can actually study. In fact, we have courses on appreciating Carnatic music, appreciating Hindustani music and all which again, you know, attract a very different kind of a learner base. So uh, if you come to Swayam portal and actually visit NPTEL courses, I think we can kind of be assured that everybody will have something that they would like to study from it. There must be something for you that interests you. The best part about NPTEL is you can learn anything you want. You are not restricted by your domain or whatever your current role or profession is. For instance, if you are a mechanical engineering student and you want to learn say programming courses and you want to learn data science courses, right, which may not be part of your curriculum, you can come to NPTEL and you can study all of that. Or maybe you were aspiring to be an electrical engineer but for maybe because of your rank and because of your marks you only got say uh, metallurgical engineering. But you can actually study electrical engineering courses from NPTEL whatever interests you and you can get a cross domain expertise also. So in that way in NPTEL we don't enforce prerequisites for you. We do say that if you know this, this, this course will be easy for you. But if you think you can manage and you can learn and you have the interest and motivation, I would say that definitely you can go for any of the courses that we offer for learning purposes. The other good thing about it is you can also see the kind of institutes that we work with. Primarily, of course, there are eight coordinating institutes, the older IITs uh, which started NPTEL in 2003. So, it's IIT Madras, IIT Kanpur, IIT Kharagpur, IIT Roorkee, IIT Bombay, IIT Gauhati, IASC and IIT Delhi. So, we also reach out to other institutes where there are very good faculty in respective areas and we invite them to offer courses. Hence, you can see that we have the newer IITs also pitching in for courses which are IIT Roper, IIT Mandi, IIT Patna. The triple IITs are offering courses under NPTEL. ICERs are offering courses under NPTEL. You can see it all here. And we also partner with CMI, the National Institute of Epidemiology, IMSE is there. And you can also see the other uh, schools here, the National Law School of India, University
university has uh, some courses based on uh, law and we also have a couple of courses from faculty who teach in institutes abroad which is outside of India. So you can see Texas A&M, you can see KTH Royal Institute of Technology Sweden, TU Berlin, we have had faculty from there also uh, teach NPTEL courses. The type of courses we offer, this is very important especially if you are a first time learner to NPTEL. There are two types of courses that we offer for certification. We call some of them as a new course and some of them as a rerun course. So a new course is a course that we are offering for the very first time in a particular semester. So the faculty would have proposed it and it is being uh, offered on the Swayam platform for the first time. While a rerun course is a course that we have recorded previously, we have offered previously, we have done exams previously and we are just repeating the videos again. The assignments and exams of course will be new but the video content will primarily be the same and we re-offer the course in the subsequent semesters. So the advantage of a rerun course is that the videos are already available on the NPTEL website. Sample assignments will be available on the NPTEL website. The statistics of how the course did are available on the NPTEL website. So you can probably go there, you can kind of see what the videos are about, whether the videos are for a level that you can cope and you are interested in. You can look at the nature of the statistics there, how many people actually enrolled, registered, certified and so on, who are the toppers, whether your college had any student participation in it and uh, that kind of data also you get access to. And then you can decide whether you want to go in for a rerun course. Anyway, the course is free. You can always enroll and not register for exams. But if you are kind of deciding on what to do, I would say first time learners try out rerun courses because you have access to all this content and data. New courses, uh, we have to see how it runs when we offer it, how students find the level of the course, whether, whether it is easy, whether it is difficult. So even we do not know till the semester is over. So if you know how NPTEL works, maybe you've done 5 or 6 NPTEL courses so far, then a new course is very easy for you. But if you are a first time learner, if you are coming from a college doing NPTEL for the first time, we would really suggest that you do rerun courses. And as you can see in the July semester, we have 583 rerun courses while 108 are new courses. So you have a wide range from which you can pick a course that has already been offered in the past. Uh, like I was uh, also saying, we have three durations of courses possible, four week course, an eight week course and a 12 week course. So a 12 week course is like your full semester course. So we don't have 14 or 16 weeks, 12 weeks is the maximum that NPTEL does. The 12 week courses go over a span of three months and they will delve into the topics to a great depth. The four week courses are more like uh, either introductory courses or there will be some niche research topics or maybe some short topics that are being dealt with and eight week courses are of course just two month courses moderate length. So depending on again you know uh, if you are a first time MOOCs learner, if you are first time coming to an NPTEL certification course then maybe you want to try out a four week course because uh, four weeks will go just like that, right? You enroll week one, week two, week three, week four, you're done. The course is over. Well, a 12 week course goes on for much longer. So you might want to try with a four week course first and then proceed on to a 12 week course. But of course, the maximum number of courses we are offering in a semester nowadays is 12 week course. Uh, this is just to give you some data on uh, what is happening with the NPTEL exams now that we've been running exams for about nine years. Uh, what is the attendance uh, percentage? What is the pass percentage? Are people passing the courses that we are offering for certification? Because many learners when we talk to for the first time, they always have this fear that these courses are from the IITs and uh, you know ISC other institutes. Can I actually learn from it? Will I be able to understand what is being taught? IITs are not for me. They get scared of even attempting and trying a course that we are offering but I will tell you that the feedback over the last nine years has been that if you are sincere and you watch the videos, you try out the assignments and you spend time, right? Anybody can learn any of the courses that are offered. There is nothing that stops you from actually learning and studying well from a course if you put in the time and the effort. A lot of students who have never ever even attempted an IIT course have done multiple courses from us are today NPTEL stars and they are doing very well in terms of their next steps in life which might be higher education or which might be a better career opportunity or internship or whatever else they were aspiring to. 
with uh, through uh, doing NPTEL courses. So typically our uh, attendance percentage in the exams has been in recent times at least very steady at about 88 uh, to 90 percent. Uh, we have been hitting 90-90 except for probably the COVID time that we did an 81 but otherwise we have been standard at about 88 to 90 percent attendance and the past percentage has uh, in recent times been around 67 to 70 percent. So in between we had a small policy change on how we wanted to uh, have the certification criteria hence the DIP UC but the last four or five semesters we have been doing about 67 to 70 percent uh, pass percentage. And the gender split has been uh, constant at 40-60, 40 female and uh, 60 male which is very very good considering that primarily a lot of engineering colleges are participating in the NPTEL program and seeing a 40-60 is actually very very refreshing and encouraging for us too. We asked learners why they take up NPTEL courses for uh, certification and this is the kind of reasons that they give us. A lot of them have been doing it for say getting a job or an internship because on your resume when you put saying I have done maybe two or three courses from the NPTEL uh, platform and the certificates are from the IITs and you show your certificate which uh, possibly has good marks and you have studied well, it is a definite crack through for the interview, right? The first thing is the recruiters will notice that you have done something additional and extra from the premier institutes and second, when they ask you questions, if you answer it well, it is a definite uh, win for you that you will land up an internship or a job. So that is something that people have said. Research purposes, many, many learners, scholars across the uh, India and outside too, they look out for what is happening uh, on the research front and many of our courses that we offer are by faculty who are doing research that they also want to showcase their area there. So that is something that uh, uh, learners are doing for research purposes. The largest bucket for us of course is the credit transfer. So today the choice based credit system is implemented in most colleges, universities across India and uh, UGC has, uh, UGC and AICT have approved up to 40% credit transfer from the Swayam platform into the regular curriculum. Of course, the uh, academic uh, council has to approve the norms on how it is done but basically credit transfer is permitted from Swayam courses and hence NPTEL courses also into the uh, students uh, transcripts. So the largest bucket that we get saying why learners do NPTEL courses is for credit transfer. In fact, you can see that for the January 2023 semester, 3.46 lakh learners have said that they are doing it for credit transfer. Then of course, there is preparing for competitive exams. For gate exams, NPTEL courses are very, very good because many of the core courses that we offer actually will form the backbone of the gate exam syllabus. So if you do this, it uh, definitely helps you prepare for gate exam and also other competitive exams that happen. Your foundations will definitely be strengthened. And then to learn about how MOOCs work. A lot of faculty also today are interested in offering MOOCs. So they also come into these courses to see how we offer the MOOCs that is there. And of course, the final is always the bottom line, I think. So that is to update uh, themselves about knowledge, to learn more and to explore new areas. I think that is why people come into NPTEL. Uh, this is something I want to highlight for uh, learners uh, doing NPTEL certification courses. This is something new that we have started. I already mentioned it at the beginning. So we have started these uh, weekly live sessions where there is a part teaching, part solving of some old assignment in a course uh, along with uh, live interaction with learners, doubt clearing that we are doing in about 280 to 300 courses every semester. So there are these uh, PMRF scholars in many institutes who have to teach as part of their uh, PMRF mandate and they are doing these live sessions. So every week there will be a two hour live session where they will uh, teach and solve assignments and clear your doubts. We really urge and request learners that please attend these live sessions and take the maximum benefit out of it or at least watch the recording much later so that you know how to solve problems because a lot of NPTEL courses has theory content in the videos but all the assignments will be problem based. So you need to really know how to work out problems so that you can solve the assignment problems. Exams will also have a lot of problem solving. Uh, the feedback for these sessions has been very good in uh, last two semesters. People say they have benefited a lot and the interactions were very helpful. That is something that uh, the learners have been telling us and hence we are continuing with this initiative in this particular semester also.
Uh, this part of the video uh, is a very interesting section because we are going to look at the learners in the NPTEL uh, certification for the last so many years. Uh, the different varieties of learners we have, the categories of recognition we have in NPTEL, I would really like to highlight that and this is a section that uh, at the NPTEL office at least we get very uh, excited and enthused and motivated to do more by seeing you know how learners are adapting and adopting NPTEL courses for furthering their uh, goals. So uh, we have been offering courses since 2014. And we found that there were many learners who started doing multiple courses with us. It is not like they did one or two courses and said, uh, you know, it's enough with NPTEL. But people came back for repeat offerings and there are people who have done more than 40 or 50 courses with us and so on. So this is the kind of data that I want to show in the coming slides. We hope this will also be a motivation for learners. When you see other learners do multiple courses and through the various categories that we have recognition and to say that I also want to be a part of that category and kind of learn and benefit from NPTEL. So when we started seeing the kind of courses that learners are doing and uh, uh, you know how many courses they are doing, we came up with seven categories of stars that we have been having for the last three years currently. Okay. So let me just describe these briefly for now. So we have something called NPTEL Domain Scholars, we have NPTEL Superstars, we have NPTEL Evangelists, NPTEL Motivated Learners, NPTEL Enthusiasts, NPTEL Discipline Stars and NPTEL Believers and you can see that the numbers are not in the tens or the hundreds but they are in the thousands in each of these right. So this is the number of uh, star learners, I will talk more about the categories in the coming slides but just looking at the numbers right, you can see that the growth of numbers in every category has been quite good over the last 3 or 4 years. So NPTEL domain scholars, there were only 8 in 2019 but now you can see every semester we are getting about 130 to 140 domain scholars. Same thing the superstars has been around 50 every semester. Uh, discipline stars has doubled it. It was like 600, 500 and so on the last two or three semesters but this semester we have gone on to about a thousand that is here. So looks like people are also recognizing that there are these categories where they can actually shine and be a part of and they are working towards it to become an NPTEL star. So the first part let us talk about domain certification. Okay. So uh, when we started seeing how learners study, we saw that they were doing NPTEL courses, multiple NPTEL courses. But when we put all the courses together, we were not getting any area of expertise. So though they would have maybe six certificates and so on from NPTEL, it was not all belonging to an area, it was very scattered. So we said why not guide the learners a bit more and tell them that these set of courses actually belong to this subdomain, these set of courses belong to subdomain, let us define the courses for them and if they complete that set of courses then we give them a separate certificate. So that is how domains were born. So domain helps to prepare for higher education because people who completed get an expertise in an area. So we are hoping that there will be better career prospects or when they go in for uh, masters interviews, you know, masters education, PhD education interviews, they will do much better in that. So uh, how do you do a domain? There is a set of core courses in every domain and then there are set of elective courses in a domain. So you have to go and uh, first do the core courses and once you complete it, you do the elective courses that are defined there. Though the pass mark for an NPTEL course is only 40 out of 100, for a domain, the average mark that you have to take across all courses in the domain is more than 60 and in every course you have to have at least 55 and above. So we up the criteria a bit more if you are to become a domain scholar and we suggest that the time period to finish a domain is about 3 years, so 6 semesters. So typically every domain has about 5 to 7 courses that you have to complete. So even if you do one course semester, it is much easier for you to complete the domain in 3 years. So we are saying that the courses are to be completed in 3 years. So that is something that is there and as a guideline we are saying maybe as students come into college if they start from their second year over second year, third year and even fourth year they can possibly finish the domain itself. Uh, so you can see the kind of domains we have defined in the various uh, uh, disciplines of engineering. This is just a sample. 
there is much more details available on the website under our uh, sub site called domains. Uh, in computer science, we have the artificial intelligence domain, data science domain, programming domain, the foundations of computing systems domain. In civil, you can see a construction materials, technology, structural analysis, structural design, environment, electrical, we have VLSI design, communication, signal processing and so it goes. Uh, here are more details that we have given here, all the domains that we have so far are listed here. You can see we have domains in aerospace engineering, biotechnology, bioscience, chemical engineering, humanities. There is also a very interesting uh, domain in the faculty specifically designed for faculty members in colleges. So we call it fundamental and advanced and this basically has a lot of courses that are related to the NAC and NBA ratings and uh, the effective teaching practices about patents, about the university system and so on. So there are a lot of courses that are designed around what would be relevant for faculty in colleges to take and we see many uh, faculty actually doing these domains as part of their uh, NPTEL learning that is there. Then management you see that there are many domains such as marketing, operations, uh, patents and IP, economics and so on. Mathematics we have one and then you have the bigger departments. So this is a sample domain certificate. You can see that uh, there are more details in the domain as compared to an NPTEL certificate. It has of course your photo, your name, it will give the name of the domain that you have completed. But we also list the courses that you have taken as part of the domain along with the QR code to verify each and every course as that you have uh, taken as part of the domain. So uh, many times we get questions on should I apply for a domain, should I inform you that I am doing a domain or something from the learners. There is no such separate registration for a domain. As you complete courses at the end of every semester we run our scripts to find out whether anybody has satisfied all the courses of every single domain and we also inform you saying that you have completed a domain. So in fact many times at the beginning of every semester we run this for all the learners and maybe learners who have done two or three courses in a domain but they are not aware that it is part of a domain. We also inform them saying hey you have done these three courses, it is part of this domain, why do not you complete the other courses and get a domain certificate. So there is no separate registration from your side or cost for this, it is just something that we run, we aggregate and put all the courses together and see whether you have completed a domain from our side. And uh, very interesting stats on uh, you know people completing domains, normally the NPTEL courses are not easy. Uh, they are technically rigorous, there is a lot of problem solving, they are very uh, you know deep, uh, there is a lot of detailing that goes into the courses and so on. So uh, we did not really expect that so many people would complete so many domains, so it is very very heartening and motivating to see uh, this kind of data. So one domain completed of 572 learners so far. Two domains, 32 learners have completed but then the uh, next part is there are four people who have completed three domains and one person who has completed four NPTEL domains so far. This is the data as of uh, June 2023. So it is really nice to see this and I think this should motivate so many others to take up domain certification. Uh, these are the domains that have been completed. We are just giving you the timeline over which the domains have been completed. The highlight in yellow as you can see the maximum number of domain completions have happened in data science and the programming domains which are the job securing domains at some level you can see. If you complete this you will be really technically strong when you go in for interviews in these areas. One out one are faculty members who have completed the faculty advanced domain that is there and the next popular one seem to be marketing and patent and intellectual property right. So that is something that again a lot of faculty and other people are doing as uh, domains. And if you want to know who the learners are who have completed the four and three domains so far, it is a student and uh, four of them are faculty members from various colleges across the country that have completed the domain details are also given here. Uh, typically how many semesters do learners take to complete a domain? Uh, what we have seen from our experience is that people normally plan for about three or four semesters. So like I said, uh, most domains have about five to seven courses. So if you are doing one course a semester and you want to go slow, you want to do it well, that is one way to do it. So that in about six semesters, you can actually finish a domain. Some of them also manage to do two courses or three courses in a semester. That is why you can see that 46 of them have finished uh, domains in two semesters. Two of them have gone really aggressive, the first uh, row right, 
uh, number of semesters one where they have finished a domain these people have just taken all courses in one single semester and cleared it and gotten a domain that is going to be really stressful I am not sure we would recommend it but if you see the three semester four semester numbers 141 228 and 143 people doing it if I think that is a very reasonable way of doing a domain so you can plan for it from your second year of college and kind of complete a domain in your second third fourth year of college if you are in engineering so that should be a very comfortable way of actually completing a domain and uh, these are the uh, stars that we are coming up again I just wanted to remind you the next category we are going to look at is the superstars category so this is again a very special category where the learners actually register for at least four five or six exams in a semester the max you can do is typically six so they register for four five or six exams in a semester and they don't just pass it but they're topper in at least three exams so these are people who really are working hard and kind of doing the courses really really well in a semester and doing many courses in a particular semester so that is this uh, superstar category that we have and evangelists are uh, people who have been with us for eight semesters or four years continuously without a break doing exams every single semester. So they have to at least be present in 18 exams in four years and passed two third of those. That is at least what we are seeing in terms of uh, how the learner is with NP10 and you can see the other categories here. So if you see the superstars here, there are many of them from all walks of life. There are faculty, there are students, there are employed. You can see where they are from here and as you can see here, the uh, one column says how many present, like how many courses they have been present for, how many passed and how many they have been a topper of. So the first uh, uh, row, Ravi Ram Ahuja, for instance, has been present in six courses past six courses and topper in five of those courses which is no mean feat it's really an intense work and I think you know such learners really deserve appreciation for the time and effort that they are putting in to learn. These are also students for students and colleges who say that even one course is very very difficult for me to uh, kind of complete. These are students from various colleges that are there you can see they are from in University College of Engineering, Pharmaceutical Science and so on who are doing multiple NPTEL courses in a semester and being toppers in many of those courses. So uh, this is also a number of uh, course takers from NPTEL from when we started it in 2014. So you can see that the largest number is of course the one course takers. So about 10 lakh people have done just one NPTEL course with us from 2014 till date. But then if you look at say the 2, 3, 4, 5 which is a more normal kind of uh, learning we would say are about uh, totally 5 lakh. 5 lakh people have done 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, anywhere between 2 and 5 courses from NPTEL in the last couple of years. But then if you see the numbers beyond that, right, there are people who we call as NPTEL fanatics. These people typically have been studying with us continuously and in fact there is one learner who has done 50 NPTEL certification courses so far and there are a couple of them in 47, 46, 45, 44 and so on and these people continue to learn with us. They are you know really taking the benefit out of NPTEL trying to learn all they can from the certification courses and these are the numbers that we are seeing here in terms of NPTEL learners. The highest number of course takers in four semesters that we actually took out from July 21 to Jan 23. There are people who are doing six, six courses every single semester. For instance, the first faculty member, uh, Professor Prashant has actually done six courses every semester. He's done 24 in four semesters and there are many more who have done maybe five or six courses alternatingly in the last four uh, semesters. Uh, we recognize these NPTEL stars on our website. There is a link called NPTEL stars on our website. If you click on it, we actually show all the categories, the people belonging to those categories. We also send them out t-shirts called NPTEL stars, which they are very proud to actually wear and display. We have met many of these stars when we have visited colleges for uh, various events and they are very proud to say that they are NPTEL stars. We have a lot of testimonials from them on our website too that you can uh, look for on YouTube. We have some feedback from them and this is what we, uh, this is how we recognize our NPTEL stars. So let's continue with uh, the other initiatives. NPTEL has uh, surrounding the NPTEL certification courses. So we have not stopped with just offering courses but we do uh, smaller initiatives around it which we feel which actually benefit the learners uh, with respect to you know their progress in either career or higher education 
uh, in terms of like you can see what all initiatives we have here. So we uh, do, we have some internship opportunities, we do soft skill training for learners who do not have that experience from say their own college. We partner with companies to uh, provide more facilities for our learners and for companies to also learn and partner with us in various ways. There is a translation effort that is going on like I had mentioned previously too and so on. So we will describe some of these a bit more in detail so that you get an idea and you can see how you can utilize any of these whichever is relevant to you. So the first point is uh, credit transfer, we talked about it when we were discussing on why learners are choosing and uh, adopting NPTEL certification courses. So UGC and AICT had actually approved up to 40% credit transfer from Swayam courses into the transcript of the students. So this is across say the art science universities, the uh, engineering universities and other kind of uh, whatever institutions might be there. This is a possibility that has been enabled by UGC and AICT. So the academic councils of the respective universities of course have to approve saying how many credits they will permit to be transferred, what is the modality of transferring the credits, whether learners just enroll to NPTEL courses or SWIM courses and do assignments or do they also have to do the exams and bring back certificates. All these will be defined by the academic councils of the respective universities, autonomous colleges, whoever is defining the policies. But broadly, up to 40% has been enabled. So it's a good idea to do at least two or three courses from uh, say platforms like Swayam, whereby you can learn something which is different and maybe something that is not offered by your own college or your own institute. Uh, we also have some recommendations for people who are evolving this policies based on our experience in the last couple of years. So one of the things we say is, uh, do not make uh, NPTEL or SWIM courses mandatory in the last semester of the degree program because many times for whatever reasons there might be a delay in the conduct of the exam or if the student is unable to pass the exam then it becomes a showstopper for getting the degree and graduating. So typically in the final year of the uh, degree program of the student it is better not to make it mandatory. If the student is you know good enough and can cope up it is up to them. If it is an option that is available to them it is much better. But making a credit transfer mandatory in the last year I think uh, I mean we all at NPTEL think may not be a good idea. Secondly when you induct students to start with NPTEL courses it is better to avoid the first semester as they come into college because the transition from school to college itself is a big change for students. So it's good if we let them settle in maybe for a semester and from second semester they can start with NPTEL courses and the courses to start off with also might be something like soft skills or uh, training in English or maybe learning a language or some such because the idea of an online course, what components it has, what they have to do every week as part of the course may not be very clear to students. So these kind of courses which are a little easier than the core technical courses might be a good idea to start the learners off on taking for credit transfer. And then uh, when the uh, bucket of courses is defined for credit transfer it is better to keep it as large as possible and as open as possible because one of the ideas of you know allowing credit transfer is for students to be able to explore other areas of interest to see whether they would like to learn and maybe you know pursue some other line of interest through these MOOCs. So they are already doing some set of courses in their regular program. So these MOOCs should allow them to also explore what they cannot study as part of their regular program. So keeping the bucket of courses much larger and open for the student to select in credit might be a good idea. And also allow the students to do the course first and then exercise a choice on whether they want to credit it because if they have not done well or maybe their marks have not come uh, well then it's better maybe they don't want to credit it and they want to do the university course itself. So uh, students can first do the NPTEL course, they can see the kind of marks and grades they have gotten. If they are happy with it they choose to do the credit transfer otherwise they opt for some other course that is uh, possible. And uh, like I said it is good idea to allow the students to do courses which are job oriented which cut across disciplines like say data science courses, programming courses, uh, English training courses, soft skill courses, communication courses and so on apart from of course the core and other elective courses which are a part of the program itself.
the second initiative that we would like to describe today is for the benefit of faculty members in colleges. So here we would like to explicitly state that uh, NPTEL has an MOU with AICT under which faculty who do advanced NPTEL courses can actually apply for an FDP certificate and convert these courses into FDP equivalent points. That is something that NPTEL kind of uh, worked out with AICT and we uh, did an MOU. So now there is an act which actually uh, formalizes this from our side. So every semester NPTEL will put out from among the courses that are being offered that semester, they will also mark certain courses which says that these are available for faculty to take as FDP. The process to get an FDP certificate is the same as a regular learner. Faculty have to enroll to the courses on Swayam, they have to do the weekly assignments, they have to register for the exam and they have to pass the exam as per the certification criteria for that course. Once they have passed it, they can also apply for an additional FDP certificate apart from the NPTEL certificate that they will get. The format that you see on the screen is actually the format that we will be issuing to the faculty who complete such FTP courses on NPTEL. And uh, the conversion mechanism that AICT has agreed upon with NPTEL is that a 4 week NPTEL course is taken as equivalent of half FDP of 1 week. An 8 week NPTEL course is taken as a full FDP of 1 week and a 12 week NPTEL course is treated equivalent to a 1 and a half FDP. And how can you identify the courses that are available for faculty to take as FTP? So that is marked in the red color there on the right side if you can see it. In every course under the description, if we have mentioned that this is an AICT approved FTP course, that course can be completed in this manner. They can apply for the certificate and get an FTP certificate. So in the July semester of 2023, you can see that out of 692 courses we are totally offering, 581 courses are categorized as FDP courses. You can also see some data here. What is the faculty registration that we are seeing uh, semester after semester? Typically 20% of those who enroll to courses actually register for exams. That is the conversion rate with respect to faculty. And out of that, a subsection actually applies for FTP certificate. So in the Jan 2023 semester, you can see that about 28,400 faculty have applied for FTP certificates from NPTEL side. So uh, one doubt that many learners get because normally when you talk about an FTP program, the audience can only be faculty. So a question that comes is, so these courses which are marked as for FTP, can students and other people not enroll and learn from it? Uh, it is not the case like that in NPTEL. In NPTEL, all courses are open for anybody who wants to enroll and learn. There is no restriction on that except that if you are a faculty, and you complete these courses that are tagged as FDP courses, you can get an additional certificate on top of the NPTEL certificate, which you can use for CAS points when you are uh, going in for promotion interviews. That is the difference, but otherwise anybody can enroll to any of these courses and they can learn from it. Uh, the third initiative we want to talk about is about two years old now. So uh, NPTEL, like we said, has a lot of content, which is more than 3000 courses under its repository on the website, free for everybody to access. And the kind of courses that we have, many or most of them are foundational level courses. That is all the core courses of the BTEC degree programs in various engineering disciplines, the PG programs that we have, all the core courses are actually covered there. And uh, these courses, were being accessed by many students in preparing for gate exams. But then the courses had lectures uh, scattered all over and they were not organized in a manner that was easy to find for a learner who was preparing for gate. So one of the ideas that we came up was why not create a gate portal where we actually categorize and kind of list all the lectures that are relevant to topics given in the gate syllabus for each discipline and kind of point learners to say, go through these videos, these will help you get the foundations for these topics of the GATE syllabus. That is what we wanted to do. So here are some things that we have done. We have linked the GATE syllabus topics to the relevant NPTEL lectures. Course wise, video wise, we have said, go through this for learning this. That is the first part we have done. 
The second one we have imported all the uh, gate question papers from the past, created additional questions on top of it and we are now offering mock tests every Sunday where the learners can come in, do a, a mock gate exam and we also release the marks that they get along with a leaderboard for it. The third one is we have created video solutions for the questions in the gate papers for the last 10 years or so in various disciplines. So there are videos that clearly show you how to solve these problems which have appeared in the gate question papers of the last few years. And the last part is uh, live mentoring sessions, live tutoring sessions, live doubt clearing sessions. We uh, offer a couple of sessions every week for every discipline where there are these PMRF scholars who are coming in and teaching and those who are preparing for GATE can actually attend those sessions. If you have any doubts, you can get it cleared by them and you can also discuss with them on any other clarifications that you require. So these are the ways in which we have prepared the GATE portal and these are the ways in which anybody who is uh, aspiring to write the GATE exam can actually prepare through NP10. Please note all of this is free of cost. There is no cost. There is no fee for you to pay to access any of these contents, be it the mock test, be it the tutoring and uh, live sessions that we conduct, be it accessing the video solutions for the gate uh, question papers, previous gate question papers or just checking the syllabus to the videos. The four types that we have, you can see that we do not charge any fee for any of it and uh, the numbers are given here of how many sessions we have, how many videos we have. You can also go through that. The gate portal is given at the top. It is called gate.nptel.ac.in. Please go there, check out the content we have. If you have any suggestions, do let us know. We will try to see whether we can incorporate that also. Here is some feedback from uh, learners who use the gate portal and actually wrote the gate exam. And it seems like the way that we have organized the content is very useful for the learners. And that is what we are seeing here uh, when they give us feedback. Uh, the next uh, initiative that uh, we'd like to describe here, we call it NPTEL Plus. It is an add-on on the NPTEL portal that we have, be it the repository or the certification courses that we run. So the certification courses we run, like we said, we do it in the January semester and July semester. So there are fixed start dates, there are fixed end dates, there are fixed exam dates. If you miss that, you have to come back to the next time we offer the courses. It is not like I have a requirement in the month of June and can I go and get myself certified from NPTEL through Swayam? It is not currently possible. But then we were getting many requests where people said we want anytime certification. Can you please enable it? So that was one driving force. And we also saw that many external portals which are not connected with NPTEL have taken NPTEL content and they are offering it on their portals for a high fee and also giving certificates to learners from their side. So we thought that instead of that being done, I think NPTEL should do it. That was the kind of, uh, you know, uh, basic that we brought in for this NPTEL Plus portal. So NPTEL Plus portal is more like a portal where additional learning can be done apart from just the regular courses. So there are two or three parts to this portal that we have. So the first part is we have self-paced courses. Okay, so these are uh, the differences between NPTEL and NPTEL Plus. So NPTEL can run only Senate approved uh, academic courses which are normally taken for credit transfer. Their audience is uh, students and faculty members in colleges. The courses are a fixed duration, 4, 8, 12 weeks and with so much of content like we said, exam dates are fixed. We run the courses only once or twice in the year in the Jan or July semester. And the enrollment is free, exam has a fee and it's open to anyone, no restriction on numbers. So this is what we already saw in the previous introduction to NPTEL. But NPTEL Plus is different where you can uh, offer any type of training program. It can be a short term training program of just 2 hours. It can be up to 4 hours. It can be up to 8 hours. It can be 2 days, 3 days, 5 days, 10 days. It is a variable duration program depending on the nature of the content being taught the duration varies. The audience is also inclusive of a lot of industry professionals keeping their requirements in mind. We are also doing the NPTEL Plus platform. Of course, augmenting the skills of learners, NPTEL learners and the faculty here, that is something that we try to do through NPTEL. So in NPTEL Plus, there is also self-paced programs. There are live programs, live workshops, short-term training, long-term training. It could be anything. 
and the certification criteria is not as rigid as for the Swayam courses where we have a in person proctored exam. Here the criteria depends on the type of workshop we are running again for the certification. Any time of the year we offer all these and any number of times we can offer it, it is flexible in that sense. All programs are paid here, they are self sustaining in some sense and the fee differs uh, based on the program, based on the topic, who our audience is, the fee also varies for each. The numbers normally are kept limited or they are kept open depending again on the nature of the interaction and nature of the program being offered. So these are some of the workshops that we have completed between uh, December 22 and Jan 23. So you can see the variety of topics uh, that we have been able to offer. These are just samples. We have many, many more uh, workshops that we have offered. Data visualization with R, there's data science applications in drug discovery and genomics. Then there's something for faculty to say re-energizing the classroom through the use of gamification. And there's machine learning techniques in biology, then introduction to biomimicry, then there is Indian democracy. So you can see the variety of uh, courses and workshops that we have been offering here through NPTEL Plus. Some other topics here are open source tools for cyber security, social computing, additive manufacturing and so on. So this is one part of NPTEL Plus where we conduct short term training programs and workshops for learners to enroll and benefit from. Uh, the other uh, aspect of NPTEL Plus is the self paced portal where we have currently about 250 NPTEL courses that are made available. But here the enrollment to the courses has a fee. There is a fee to enroll. It is not free like we do in Swayam. But you can enroll any time of the year to a certification course. There are assignments that are given here and there is a criteria for fulfilling with respect to exam registration here. So you have to complete every assignment with a 50% cutoff. So that is something that we do here. It is not best 3 out of 4 or best 4 out of 6 but it is every single assignment that you have to complete scoring more than 50 marks in each of it then you become eligible for the examination. The exams are conducted online proctored. They are not in person but they are online proctored and the exams are conducted every week. So you can potentially enroll to a course. You can maybe complete the course in about a week's time say you go through the videos, you do the assignments, you clear the cutoff of the assignments and within next week you can take up the exam and get a certificate from NPTEL on this. So this is the uh, anytime certification portal of NPTEL which is what is called NPTEL plus. So NPTEL plus has self paced courses, NPTEL plus under that we offer workshops, we offer short term programs, we offer a little long term programs maybe like 3 months and so on and we also offer third party programs. So industry professionals have come in and they have offered courses on their behalf, there are many of it going like that. There are third party programs like those offered by Nilet for say their labs, their virtual labs and so on. So those are something that we also partner and advertise with our audience. Uh, those are third party programs. So these are the kind that we do on NPTEL Plus and it is a paid e-learning portal of NPTEL. The next initiative is very interesting we uh, think for uh, learners especially who are looking out for pursuing higher education after doing whatever they are currently. So this is something that we uh, started in 2018. This is internships for toppers in the NPTEL certification courses. So the basic process that we do here is we reach out to the faculty who have offered the NPTEL certification course and we ask them whether they would like to take a few interns during the summer or the winter. And if they consent to this, then we write to the toppers in the course and we tell them that here is an opportunity for you, uh, so and so faculty has agreed to take interns, please send us your resume and your statement of purpose on why you want to do that internship. And these are passed on to the faculty who then decides and finalizes from among the applicants who are the interns they would like to take. Normally the internship nowadays we are stressing that it be in person at the institute so that these learners also get a feel of the lab that is going on there, the research work going on at the institute, they get a chance to stay at the institute possibly interact with the scholars who are there, with the faculty who are there and so on. So uh, more and more uh, faculty are also preferring that the interns come in person and do the internship in person. But there are a few online internship opportunities also going around as part of this. Uh, there is a stipend for the intern who goes over and stays in person at an institute to cover their costs of travel and stay there. 
and there is a certificate that is given to the intern at the end of the internship if they completed successfully and the faculty also agrees that the work done was up to the mark. So, uh, so far we have been uh, targeting so many interns, we are hoping to really increase these numbers in the upcoming semesters. So, we have tried to do about 200 interns this time in January 2023 and we hope that this will increase to 300, 400 in the upcoming semester. So, if you are doing an NPTEL certification course, please remember there might be an opportunity to get an internship under the professor who has offered the course and this could be a very good chance for you all to further your learning in that area and also work with them, try to explore new areas that are happening within the institute and also get new opportunities for interaction. Uh, this is one more uh, unique opportunity that we have partnered with a company that is, uh, has been, uh, who has agreed to offer internships based on NPTEL courses that the learners complete. So, TI has actually partnered with NPTEL to provide summer internship opportunities for NPTEL learners. The courses that, that are given here are basic electrical circuits and analog circuits or analog IC design. If learners do any two of these three courses, then they will be eligible to interview for internship positions by TI and TI will be extending a, a internship opportunity in the summer of the third year and if they are happy with the student, they are also looking at extending pre-placement offers to such students. Uh, there is also one more set of courses they are looking at, circuit analysis for analog designers, time varying electrical networks and so on. If you complete any of this, then these students will be given additional preference on top of those who finish category 1. So, this is something that we have partnered with TI. So, if there are students and learners in the electrical engineering uh, discipline, please watch out for this, see whether you have completed these courses. If you have, then inform us and try for this internship position. Industry associates, so NPTEL also sees value that many industry professionals, working professionals are enrolling to NPTEL certification courses and benefiting from it. And it's also that many times the employer wants to formally also engage the employees into the NPTEL certification courses. And uh, companies can also help absorb NPTEL learners uh, by means of internship and recruitment if they have job openings for them in certain areas and we can also give them the list of people who have say skill sets in those areas. Uh, CSR is another area that we work with uh, industry associates, uh, technical talks, leadership talks on the current uh, research and technology that happens, that is something that the companies again do. If there is employee time available, then we do something called mock interviews for our NPTEL learners. So, there are multiple ways in which we engage with companies all across and currently we are partnering with 87 companies and these are called NPTEL industry associates. NPTEL has an MOU with them which kind of outlines all the positive collaborations that are there and the company can choose to do one or more of that and interact with NPTEL. So, these are some of the companies that we have MOUs with. You can see that they span the various areas uh, which includes manufacturing, which includes uh, energy like NLC India, there are IT companies like IBM and Infosys, and there are companies also like, uh, there are startup companies uh, that are also partnering with us. There is Mahindra and Mahindra, the automotive companies, uh, Tejas Networks is in the electrical field and so on. So, there are companies from various domains that are partnering with NPTEL. Uh, these are more here for your uh, perusal. So, these are companies that we are working with. And they partner with us in various ways like I uh, mentioned earlier. The next initiative that NPTEL brought about because many times when we interacted and we had forwarded the resumes of NPTEL learners uh, to companies that were looking out for hiring people, one thing that we found that was uh, even though the NPTEL learners had good certifications and marks from us, they were unable to communicate very clearly and express themselves very clearly. And that's where we saw the lack of soft skill training and confidence in such learners. So, we came up with an initiative where we have a set of uh, soft skill trainers on board with us and we reach out to local chapters, the colleges that partner with us and we say that if they have a batch of say uh, 30 students who require soft skill training, we would be happy to extend that again totally free of cost. NPTEL does it just for its partners which are the local chapters and uh, these could be 7 day trainings or 14 day training that we put the students through. Uh, in these trainings they do employability assessment tests 
they do online mock interviews they do group discussions they also get a half an hour one on one time with the soft skill trainer so there they get inputs only for them on how they are presenting on how they are communicating which areas they have to improve on how does their resume look and so on so these students also do a half an hour one on one with the soft skill trainers to get specific inputs uh, the numbers in terms of what we have done about 244 colleges we have completed soft skill training so far and uh, who are partnered with us and uh, some numbers here the interactive group session had about 7000 people who participated overall so far and hr mock interview one on one 4286 have been undergoing from our side uh, impact of soft skill training we have found that the students who went through the soft skill training definitely their confidence was much much better when they went in for interviews and they also got a lot of tips from the soft skill trainers and these are feedback which says that uh, it helped them in actually preparing and presenting themselves to potential recruiters or for anybody else who was interviewing them this is something that uh, we do uh, for again local chapters the colleges that uh, partner with us so uh, we see that many students come in from economically disadvantaged backgrounds and even the rupees 1000 that we charge as a course exam fee seems to be very high for them and this fee kind of becomes a blocker for them to give the nptel exam so though they might be studying very well they might be very interested this fee becomes a blocker for them to give the exam hence to remove this obstacle of a fee stopping them from getting an nptel certificate nptel has been approaching companies since 2015 and uh, appealing to the csr division saying that if they can extend a 50% fee waiver on the rupees 1000 to such students it would really help the students you know gain certificates and also build their resume sharpen their skills and become more job ready so this has been something that we have been doing and there are a couple of companies that have been helping us as listed here so uh, initially it was arisen technologies that was a very big donor for us now it is followed by gaps technology sutherland global services uh, tata technologies has uh, provided us csr support ansys software texas instruments india ananta technology and there are individual donors also who give for this particular bucket we are very thankful to all of these people for supporting our students who are coming from such economically disadvantaged background so the way that we administer this is that students have to pay the rupees 1000 and write the exam and pass it once they have done that the local chapter college will make a list of students who require this fee waiver and pass it on to nptel they will collect the proof they will do the background check and give us the final list nptel will then pass on a 50% refund to these students who have passed the courses so that's how we are administering this particular uh, scholarship on exam fees through csr support from the companies and for companies watching this this csr is given to iit madras and uh, you will be given atg certificates the utilization certificates are given we will also give you the report of how the money was distributed where all it went it is a pan india initiative because students are all across india and that's where this 50% scholarship will be distributed from our side so that is for companies anybody watching and who wants to partner with csr on this uh, this is the paperwork that we will give from our side and as you can see we have distributed these uh, uh, fee waivers for about 1.4 lakh students so far in the last 7 uh, years but uh, with the growing number of learners who are writing nptel certification exams whatever we have is never enough so we appeal to anybody saying that we'll be very happy to get back any contribution from your side that we can pass on to such students to write nptel exams this is a feedback from student beneficiaries as you can see here and uh, these students even that uh, 500 rupees we give back becomes like a seed for them to come back for the next exam and do more courses uh, with us uh, we have stories of uh, students who are first generation learners whose parents are daily wage laborers whose parents are actually rickshaw walas and so on who have done nptel courses and benefited through these uh a fee waiver that is provided by uh, from the csr funds and they have actually gotten seats into higher education institutes because of enabling this particular waiver so you can also see the distribution across the states here on the right side you can see that about students in 300 colleges have benefited through this uh, csr fee waiver and it is all across india that your 
support goes to. Uh, the next initiative is a bigger part of NPTEL. It is almost like a mainstream content that is now happening in NPTEL. So this is the translation effort that we have been doing in the last couple of years. So uh, we have been uh, doing this effort from about 2020 now and we have completed about 20,000 hours of content totally across so many languages. So you can see that 224 unique courses are translated into different sets of languages so far and almost 20,000 hours of translated content is available on NPTEL website. And there is also work that is ongoing, we are adding more, uh, uh, more number of courses to this bucket to be translated and we hope that much more will be delivered in, the, in this year which is 2023 and 2024. The languages that we are looking to translate into are listed here also, there are 11 languages we are targeting. But the most popular is of course Hindi, we try to do most courses uh, getting translated into Hindi followed by of course uh, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, Kannada, Gujarati, Bengali and so on. So if you all are faculty members in colleges and you teach any of the courses which is on our translation list and you are very comfortable with your regional language which is any of these 11, please do get in touch with the NPTEL office so that we can also check whether uh, you are eligible as a translator and we will assign work to you. So we require a large pool of uh, resources and manpower to do this translation effort because the uh, software that automatically do it are still not up to the mark that they don't give you perfect translation. So we get a first cut from the uh, ML models that are being developed now but we do need a human to actually check what is being translated, what is the output, make corrections on it and make it readable to the end user. So for that we require uh, technical trained manpower which ideally can be the faculty in the colleges who teach these courses, who know the content in these courses, know the local language also and will be able to help us in this translation effort. So if you are interested, please reach out to the NPTEL office and we will assign work to you. So where all can you find these uh, translated content, right? How do you access the translated content? That is something that we also want to show you because we have translated so much content but whether the end users actually know where it is and how to access it is something that we are not sure about. Hence here I would like to spend a few minutes to show you where this translated content can be accessed. So there are a few places, the one is on YouTube uh, we have uploaded the translated content as subtitles and you can change the subtitle language on the YouTube video, you can toggle between the various languages available and you can watch it there. That is the first part. The second part, YouTube is also uh, bringing out a beta version uh, currently, it is in beta currently, where you can upload audio tracks in different languages and you can also toggle the audio tracks to listen to whatever audio you want. So we can have dubbed videos now for NPTEL videos where the language is regional Indian languages. Now let us see, we will play around with it. If I write the third part on the Swayam platform, below the video, there is a box where the transcript is put in and there you have a drop down language bar. If you change the language there, the language in which you see it inside the Swayam course also changes. The fourth part that you can actually find this content is on the NPTEL website. Below the video that you see inside any course, there is also a text transcript box. There too you can change the language and you can read the transcript in different Indian languages. We also have saved each of these translated versions as uh, PDFs in various languages. We have put them together as books that you can download. Hence say for example, we have books which are introduction to research in Marathi, introduction to research in Hindi, introduction to research in Tamil and so on. These are full fledged books that we have done. We have put together all the lectures into one single PDF, we have indexed it with page numbers and so on and you can download that and you can also view that. So these are the places where you can find the different language translated content on either Swayam portal, on NPTEL portal or the YouTube videos, all these have it and we would really request people using this content in local languages to give us some feedback 
on whether this is useful to you all, have you used it, what is the quality of the translation so that we also know where we have to improve and what we have to do for the same. So, uh, requesting you all to please give a feedback, check out the translated content and let us know whether it is useful for you or how to do it better. The next initiative that we would like to touch upon is something called lab workshop. So, when we were offering uh, courses for certification through NPTEL, a lot of requests came in saying all of this is theory, where are the hands on component. So, that is when we went back to institutes and we said can we utilize the labs that we have in these institutes during summer and winter, uh, typically when the institute students are not actually doing the labs there and use it at that time for the NPTEL learners. So, we came up with this model where typically a lab workshop is a one week workshop, uh, Monday to Friday uh, every day there are two experiments that is conducted. There are also technical talks, lectures and visits to other labs that are done during these 5 days so that learners who come to the institute are exposed to the facilities in that particular institute. On Saturday we run a lab exam for that particular 5 days of content whatever was done and then we give a certificate for the lab workshop. Typically these can be taken as a 1 credit course if the academic council approves it. Again we subsidize this entire lab workshop for NPTEL learners, we only collect rupees 200 as the registration fee. The accommodation and the food charges have to be borne by the student when they go in person to the institute. So for instance say IIT Madras is conducting a lab workshop, typically we will uh, ensure all students attending the lab workshop have to come and stay in Madras. We will try for hostel accommodation if possible within the institute, if possible we will facilitate. Otherwise accommodation has to be taken care of students by outside and so to food. But they will be able to spend at least from 9 am to 7 pm, 6 pm within the institute for about 6 days going uh, you know through the various labs of IIT Madras, meeting faculty here, meeting research scholars here, doing experiments and so on which will be again a really good experience for people going through the lab workshops. Uh, some of the lab workshops that we have done say in the last couple of months, uh, some of them are online but most of them are in person like we said. So you can see electronic devices and characterization, analog circuits and applications, digital system design and verification using the uh, Krypton board, internet of things etc. All these have been in person workshops at one of the institutes. Sometimes the workshop duration is 6 days, it has been 2 days or it has been two weeks. So, this is the way that we conduct and you can see the participants also. These are smaller groups, they are much restricted. It varies anywhere between 20 to 50 that we are able to accommodate in a batch. Uh, here are social media handles. Uh, NPTEL has a presence on LinkedIn, it has a presence on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and the YouTube community. So, we are available on all these five social media handles. You can see the followers also here. Uh, recently, the last one year, we have been very active on the social media, putting out very good posts and memes and receiving very good feedback. So, thank you for the support and thank you for following us and thank you for encouraging us for all the posts that we are making there. So, if you follow our handles, most of the information on the NPTEL projects are normally also put out here in terms of posts. So, you can know what is going on with NPTEL, what are the new initiatives that are there and see if anything is interesting to you.
uh, these are again two partnerships with companies that we have done. We saw the TI partnership uh, for internship, but then this is for certification courses from these two companies. So Microsoft offers uh, Microsoft certification courses. There are two types, which is the basic office uh, certification as well as a faculty led uh, certification, which also requires completion of a project. And ANSYS is the company that has a lot of tools with students of say mechanical engineering or chemical engineering and so on should be very familiar with. They have also come out to say that toppers in certain courses of NPTEL identified by them will be given a chance to go through the ANSYS certification tracks and get badges and these are free of cost. There will be no cost for it. They are sponsoring a certain number of badges which are normally costed outside because of NPTEL partnership they are saying that they can give it free that such students, such toppers can avail of this and actually get ANSYS course certification badges. The same is with Microsoft. More details will be shared with you during live sessions and through your colleges. Look out for such opportunities. It is very good if you do something like this because these are industry certification programs and on your resume they definitely strengthen that you have done something outside of just technical theory courses. So NPTEL local chapters is an initiative we started in 2015 when the certification was also started from our site. We wanted a way in which we could partner with colleges because our primary audience for NPTEL is students in uh, colleges and faculty in colleges. Hence we wanted a proper way in which we could partner with them so that firstly we could do information sharing that say NPTEL has so many courses, these are for certification and to publicize these courses amongst the colleges, we had to build a network. So in 2015, we came up with this concept of establishing local chapters in colleges whereby they can partner with NPTEL. So how does a college partner with NPTEL as a local chapter, right? So a local chapter is established in a college and hence all the people under that college come under the local chapter. So it is uh, students, it is faculty, it is non-teaching staff, everybody comes under that particular local chapter. So there is no requirement for and separate and individual registration by every member of the college again with NPTEL. But as an umbrella, the local chapter encompasses all the people under that particular college. That is a part one. Secondly, is there any money to be paid to NPTEL to become a local chapter? Absolutely no. Please be aware of this. NPTEL does not collect any money for establishing local chapters in colleges. This is completely free. What we require from the local chapter or the college is a letter on the letterhead of the uh, head of the institution where the head says that we want to establish a local chapter in our college. They give the details of the person who will be our single point of contact or a spark as we call. So we need the name, the department, the email ID, the mobile number of the person who will be acting as a spark. So on that letterhead letter, we require these details also to be shared with us, signed by the head of the institution. So once the head of the institution says we wish to partner with NPTEL, Everybody under that local chapter in college actually comes as part of this partnership. So there is no separate registration for anybody else from that particular institution. Is there any other facility required to be having a local chapter? Do we require a separate uh, room? Do we require name boards? Do we require any infra? Absolutely not. There is nothing required. But in many colleges we have seen that in the library they have designated certain computers as having NPTEL content. So if the NPTEL content is being locally probably stored somewhere, certain computers are given access to that server and you can uh, access NPTEL content without going on the internet from that place. In some colleges we have seen that they will say NPTEL local chapter coordinator or some such a small board but that is mostly the room of the coordinator themselves. It is not like there is a separate infrastructure that is required and uh, is there a membership fee for the people who actually partner with NPTEL? There is no membership fee also for the people under the college who become part of the local chapter. So hope this is clear. All we need is a letter from the head of the institution saying we wish to become a local chapter and giving us details of the person who will act as our contact within the institute as the single point of contact for the local chapter. So one thing which we have been doing uh, in the past even like 15 years is that 
if you all give us hard disk and say which disciplines of content we have to copy, we can copy the entire NPTEL content and share it with you so that you can put it on your intranet on your local server. So that say when 1000 students are accessing NPTEL content, if your college does not have enough bandwidth for them to go online and go to our website, they can do it from your local server. So that is something that we facilitate. We actively copy the content and give it to you whatever you require and you don't have to take the entire content also. For instance, say you are an art science college and you do not have disciplines such as uh, mechanical engineering or chemical engineering, you do not need those particular courses. You can just tell us saying, okay, give me English, mathematics, give me physics, chemistry, computer science, engineering, maybe only these courses that come under this we would require. So, we will copy only that for you and we will send it on hard disks. So, the total content size that we have now is, is approximately 15 terabytes. So, whatever you require, approximately you can give us that many hard disks, we will copy it and give it to you again. This is free of cost, there is no cost to it, no money to be paid to us for doing this copying. It normally takes about one or two weeks depending on the number of uh, institutes we are copying for. Once we are done, we will inform you, you can come and collect it back. So, what is the advantage of uh, becoming a local chapter? Why should a college become a local chapter? Uh, can a college uh, participate in NPTEL certification courses without actually establishing a local chapter? So, yes, colleges can participate in Swayam and NPTEL courses without establishing local chapters. There is no stopping anybody from learning for any of these courses. But there are advantages if you become a local chapter. So, the very first and biggest advantage if you are a local chapter is the SPOC or the person who is nominated by the institute called the single point of contact has two logins to entire data of members from their local chapter who are participating in the courses. So, one is on the Swayam portal. So, when you go to swayam.gov.in and you log in, if we designate you as the SPOC, you will also get a drop down there called SPOC login. So, once you go to the SPOC login, you can see the data of course wise how many people from your local chapter have enrolled to courses, who are the people who are submitting assignments. There is also a way in which you can assign faculty members as mentors for your own students so that you can also track the mentors to the students and they can actually ensure that these students are learning every week, submitting assignments and so on. So that is something that is available on the Swayam portal for a SPOC. There is also a login for the SPOC on nptel.ac.in slash local chapter website and here we give you much more information from our site. So, for instance, of course, you will again get the enrollment details of who all have enrolled to various courses, but you will also get access to exam registration details, who all have registered to exams. Once the hall tickets are received, we will also share the hall tickets of all these candidates with you. You will get access to that. You will get access to the center information. So, if you want to arrange for some buses or transport to the exams uh, centers on the exam day, you can do that. So, that is there. Once the results are released, the marks and the e-certificates of all the candidates under your local chapter are shared with you. So, you can directly use them for credit transfer or for FDP points or as relevant within your institute. That is one more thing. Then the local chapter rating plaques, the mentor certificates, the SPOC certificates, star certificates, all of these are made available inside your login. So, inside your login, all this data is kept over a period of time. We do not delete it from semester to semester. You will have complete access to all this data across from when you start your local chapter to the current date. So, even when say there are accreditation agencies that are visiting you like NAC or NBA and they ask you whether you are doing anything on Swayam, you can open your SPOC login and you can show them that these are the data within my login that NPTEL has shared and this is the participation from our side. You can see all the certificates here and so on. So, the most important aspect of becoming a local chapter and having a SPOC is that you actually get access to data directly from our side that you can check, verify and use in whatever way is required on your side. There are also additional benefits uh, for becoming a local chapter. So, if your uh, college is situated in a city where we currently do not do exams and you would like, maybe you have more than say 200 students writing exams from your college, 
you can approach us to establish an exam center in your city itself so that is something we will work with our exam partner we will see if it is possible and we will try to do it also it's not like we need 200 uh, candidates only from your college you can talk to all the neighboring local chapters in your city and across the uh, different local chapters in your city if we get this number also it is enough for us so that is something that you can interact with us and you can let us know if you want an exam center in your particular city the next advantage is that there is a mentor mentee relationship possible on the swayam portal so once a faculty member is set as a mentor on the swayam portal and students tag themselves to the mentor the mentor can actually see the assignment marks of the students so when the assignment is open they can see whether they have submitted it or not after the deadline they will also get access to the assignment marks so how does this uh, help or how does this really help the students or the college so basically say there are 1000 students who are doing different courses in a particular college so you can put one one mentor for say every 20 students or 30 students or 50 students and you can designate their email id as a mentor on the swayam portal you can ask all your students to tag themselves to the mentor and in the class the mentor can also follow up every week with that group of 30 or 50 students on whether they have watched the videos whether they have submitted the assignment if somebody is not submitting assignments and you know it's very important for credit transfer you can follow up with those students and so on so it's a very good feature if you're a local chapter to be uh, using this faculty members nominated as mentors who can actually supervise the progress of their students and the third point that we have is the fee waiver from the csr bucket we already spoke about how we extend fee waivers Uh, through the generous donation of companies uh, that give it from the csr buckets this we actually facilitate through local chapters so we actually ask local chapters which students from the college are coming from economically backward backgrounds and who will require this fee waiver so the spark and the principal of the local chapter actually nominate and give us the list and we pass on the refunds to that list so this is a help and trust that we put into the local chapter and we ask them to give us who is it that requires this support and uh, just to reiterate direct sharing of learner data again with the spark and the college comes from us through your logins uh, that you can use maybe for uh, credit transfer or you can use for certificates of your faculty and so on that you can do other thing that we do for every single local chapter that partners with us is that we have a page on nptel website that is publicly accessible by anyone who searches for that particular college so here is a sample page we have given that's the name of the college the logo of the college is put there the spark details are given here and we also say since when we are partnering with them and below that you can see that there is a table kind of a format where we show every semester how many students enrolled how many students were present how many of them passed whether they were toppers whether they were stars and so on so this is a publicly displayed information about every single local chapter that we work with so if a student is say generally browsing to see which colleges they might want to join and they are say googling some college name our page also gets a hit and they know that so and so college is very active with nptel there is an opportunity to do certification from nptel and iit courses and it might influence their decision in some way so this is a page that we publicly maintain for every single local chapter that partners with us uh another benefit that we try to extend to uh, sparks because they are the most important piece in our partnering with colleges taking information from our side to the learners in the colleges be it students and faculty uh, getting together the entire community for learning from nptel courses facilitating their study time so many times we have seen that colleges put nptel uh, course learning into the timetable itself and two or three periods in a week is for students to learn nptel courses in some places where we have seen say 100 students are doing the same course they take them to a class they stream the content video content there is a local faculty member the faculty member answers explains and tries to solve the assignment with the student then ensure that the students are also submitting assignments and so on so the person of contact for us who is the spark is very important for us because they get this ecosystem running inside the college for the students and the faculty to do the nptel certification courses so a small benefit that we try to extend from our side is 
we try to say that there is support available to the tune of rupees 25000 for sparks who have papers in conferences in certain institutes so that is something that we have shown they can apply to us every month and they can say that they have a paper if it uh, kind of satisfy the norms that we have put down for support we support their registration to the conference their travel and accommodation so this is something that we have been saying and if the spark is not actively using it they can also nominate a faculty member to avail of this benefit so just to reiterate we do not collect any money from any local chapter on our side and uh, all this we do as small uh, benefits for the sparks from our side based on whatever funds we get from moe so the course funding whatever we get we keep aside a portion for benefiting such people also and we use it for them the local chapters we have a total of 5600 plus colleges that we are working with today across the country and about 50 colleges which are outside india too so we are working with some colleges outside india but most of them are primarily within india you can see the split of colleges that have become local chapters across the state so maharashtra leads the count of colleges more than 1100 local chapters we have in maharashtra tamil nadu comes next with 800 then madhya pradesh which is 530 then comes uttar pradesh karnataka kerala and so on but if you see the percentage of how many of these local chapters are active and how many are actually doing well with us in that tamil nadu actually tops the ranks tamil nadu uh, local chapters are much more active with us participate much more in nptel courses and so on and then the other states actually follow so you can also see why the local chapters are very very important for us there is about 80 to 85 percent of the entire enrollment that NPTEL gets in every semester, the exam registration that we get every semester is from local chapter colleges. So you can see that our primary audience, being students and faculty members in colleges, actually is taken care of by the local chapters, the SPOCs, the mentors who work there, the faculty members who are behind the scenes arranging and organizing that. Uh, students and faculty from the colleges can actually enroll in NPTEL courses and uh, benefit from it. That entire ecosystem we see that has contributed to about 80 percent every semester enrollment and exam registration to be coming from the colleges. So the local chapter uh, environment is very very important for us in the entire NPTEL journey, and we thank each and every local chapter for the support that they have given us over the years and for standing with us. Uh, for the last 10 years that we have been doing certification so this is the state wise numbers that i was saying that uh, we have uh, currently so tamil nadu is anywhere between 25 to 30% uh, over the last even as you can see uh, seven semesters then comes andhra pradesh then comes up maharashtra west bengal and so on So uh, here are some suggestions for uh, the sparks of newly established local chapters on what you might want to do, how you would like to do awareness within your college, how do you start off work on NPTEL certification courses because you are just about becoming a local chapter, and how do you uh, you know capitalize on the experience of other local chapters which have been with us for a couple of years. So one of the things we will say is. identify the local chapters that have been very active with nptel in the last say 2 or 3 years and invite their spokes to your college to come and give talks address your students address your faculty on how they have been operating within their college it will give you a good idea of what mechanisms you can also put in place to see that your students learn well from nptel certification courses and this we have been discussing a lot i think but just to kind of reiterate this go in for soft skill courses and english courses as the first course for your students if you are just starting off with nptel try programming courses if they are skilled enough or if they do not learn programming maybe you should do programming courses from nptel they are not easy the pass percentages are not very very high but students have to put in time and effort and then they do very well in programming courses the other courses we would recommend are skill based courses such as data science iot ml etc that any stream any discipline any student can actually try and do and then the uh, motivated students the interested learners those who are aspiring to do higher education if they are in the ug program currently you can put them on the pathway for domains 
So if they have like four or five semesters ahead of them, you can start them off from the second semester and they can start doing courses which come under a particular domain. This will be really valuable for them that they will have a domain certificate as they are also graduating from your college. And students writing gate exams, you can also tell them about the gate portal that we have and see whether they can use it, okay. The other suggestion we had said, uh, try for rerun courses, don't go in for new courses immediately the first time that you are doing courses from your local chapter. So try rerun courses, appoint mentors, the faculty as mentors so that they can monitor the students progress and also nudge them, motivate them to complete courses and submit assignments. Uh, like I said, you can also have uh, periods in the timetable in the week where students actually are given time by the college to also do NPTEL courses. So they can be taken to the library or maybe they sit and watch in their class, they watch together, they solve together, whatever be the model or modality. But give some time from the college timetable itself for students to study NPTEL courses and most important. The NPTEL exam dates are fixed for even 2024 already we have published it on our website. So uh, go through the exam dates we have and ensure that there are no other activities happening in the college for the students and faculty around these dates. Please keep these exam dates clear so that they can go and write the exams and get certified from NPTEL courses. If there are university exams please also tell the authorities that uh, NPTEL exams are there being taken for credit transfer and better to avoid these dates for any other university activities or university exams. Uh, communication modes with the NPTEL office, how all do we keep in touch SPOCs from these colleges? So we have WhatsApp groups for SPOCs of every state. So currently we are running about 18 WhatsApp groups. Uh, for instance, Tamil Nadu has three groups, Maharashtra has two groups and so on that is happening. So on these the SPOCs are added to those WhatsApp groups and we put out all the information, alerts, whatever posters, messages we have to send. We also put it on the WhatsApp group. We alert them whenever an important mail goes out so that they actually see it. So that is the first part. Second one, we have a Google group for all the SPOCs called uh, NOC SPOC at nptel.iitm.ac.in. On this all the 5600 SPOCs are there. And we can send a mail to them as a broadcast. They can also write on this, which helps them to interact with the other SPOC. So this is a second mode. The third one, we have a ID called local chapter at nptel.iitm.ac.in. This is the email ID of the local chapter team that interacts with all the SPOCs. So once you send an email to this ID, the team will help you with any issues that you might have with respect to say your college, your login or some other data etc that is there. So if it is an individual issue pertaining only to you, please write to local chapter at nptel.iitm.ac.in. The LC team also has a phone number which we have published and you can call them on that. You can call any of us here. Uh, many of us are available to handle the local chapter queries that come in from the various SPOCs. Every Thursday at 5 p.m. their NPTEL office is conducting a one hour Gmeet which is open to all SPOCs who can come and join. If you have queries that are specific, you can get it cleared there in the Gmeet or we just walk you through the new features that have happened, any new initiatives that are there. We also discuss that so that you get an idea of what is happening in the NPTEL project. And uh, most of the information is already shared on the NPTEL local chapter website. So you can go through that also. There is public information, there is information inside your login and that should be quite more than sufficient for you to know about whatever is happening on the NPTEL front. And like we have said, the SPOCs have access to this kind of data. So on Swayam, SPOCs have a login to see enrollment information, assignment marks and mentor setting. And on NPTEL website, the SPOCs get access to enrollment data, exam registration data, hall tickets and center information, marks scored by the uh, people under the local chapter and their certificates the FTP certificates, detailed information about learners in the college, certificates of local chapters, box, mentor, rating, etc. Fee waiver selection document upload for it. Also, the first letter that you will send to us saying we want to establish a local chapter and our acknowledgement of the same, those letters also inside your SPOC login. And there's a public page like I showed you already that every local chapter 
we maintain on the website. So, this is all the communication modes, some of them are public, some of them are individual that we keep pushing and we keep interacting with you all. Apart from all of this, every 6 months we also conduct in person meetings in the 4 zones. Normally in the south zone we do it at IIT Madras, west zone we do it at IIT Bombay, north zone IIT Kanpur organizes it normally in Delhi or Kanpur and in the east zone IIT Kharagpur or IIT Gauhati will be doing the workshop. So here every 6 months we invite the SPOCs to actually come in person so that we can interact, we can meet, we can discuss any issues from your side, from our side and see how to resolve it so that the entire NPTEL certification effort which is actually a ecosystem of so many stakeholders, right? There is the NPTEL office, behind the NPTEL office are the faculty, the teaching assistants, the various institutes that are offering courses and then we have the local chapters, there are students there, there are faculty members there, there is the other audience of industry professionals or uh, people not affiliated to local chapters. There are industries that are working with NPTEL, their employees are also learning, they are also giving back to NPTEL in multiple ways. Then there is the Ministry of Education which is supporting this entire effort for us and ensuring that the enrollment to all of these courses is free, that people are able to learn for free by giving us enough funding to maintain all the courses. So what else do we do for uh, local chapters here? So once the semester is over and uh, the results have come out for all the courses of that semester, we have been rating the local chapters based on their participation and performance in the NPTEL courses of that particular semester. So there is a formula that we use for rating and it uh, basically depends, we give different weightages for learners based on uh, the type of certificate they got, the number of learners that are there whether it is faculty or students and so on, there is a formula we use for calculating the rating points for the various local chapters and the top 100 local chapters are recognized every semester with ratings as given here. So the top 10 chapters are given a AAA rating and then you have 11 to 50 is given AA rating, 51 to 100 is given a rating of A. And apart from it, we also recognize local chapters that have at least some registration with us which is 25 out of which 13 should have at least appeared and passed for courses and we call them as an active local chapter for that particular semester. So these are the kind of uh, certificates and plaques that are awarded to the local chapter which actually gets the rating and there is a formula like I was telling you which gives different weightages for the types of certificates that are there. So we uh, announce these lists publicly and we put it out on our website and we also Felicitate the spokes of these local chapters which do very well during the zonal meetings that we actually have. Uh, there are awards in more categories that we have been bringing about in the last couple of years based on the different types of you know uh, patterns we have seen with local chapter participation. So now we have awards for new local chapters that have just come in in the last semester and have already come into the top 100. So we recognize them. Uh, local chapters that have a good faculty participation. So the number of faculty writing exams, if it is high, we recognize that. Uh, local chapter showing maximum improvement. So last time they would have had some points calculated, this time they have points calculated. If the improvement is high, then those local chapters also we recognize here. Uh, improvement in terms of number of certifications, number of people who are appearing from the college, writing exams and passing. That is something again that we recognize for local chapters. Uh, we have a couple of categories of colleges that we partner with. So there is of course the engineering and technology colleges. There is also art science colleges which are in huge numbers with us. There are management colleges, pharmacy colleges, law colleges, medical colleges. But the next biggest bucket after the engineering uh, colleges are the art science colleges. So we thought it would be right to recognize them because NPTEL courses do not offer all that they have in their curriculum, hence they are disadvantaged but still they do very well in NPTEL courses and hence we thought we should recognize them. So we also recognize the top art science colleges in the top 100 and outside the top 100. And then like we discussed about the stars, we also recognize local chapters that have the maximum number of NPTEL stars in every semester. So that is also a recognition award that goes out to the 
local chapter because they motivate their uh, faculty and students to actually become a star and hence we would like to recognize that effort. Uh, this is the other category that we got where we saw consistent performance from local chapters over a couple of semesters. So, we basically said that in the last 7 ratings, if somebody has been in the top 100, they will be recognized as an LC star and they will also be given a certificate of recognition. So, this is something that we brought about and every semester we also look into this who has been in the top 100 for the last 7 semesters and we call them an LC star. So, mentors who also mentor students do have a certification criteria based on mentees performance. The mentees have done well and there is some minimum points that the mentor scores. They also get certificates of appreciation from our side uh, for having mentored the students very well. And if the students have a topper or a gold medalist award, the mentees get it. Then the mentor also gets a top performing mentor uh, seal on their certificate. We hope you got an overview of the various uh, initiatives that NPTEL does. Starting with what is NPTEL, the NPTEL certification courses, how do you enroll and do a certification from NPTEL, what is the certification criteria, then a little bit about the different types of learners that we have seen, the star categories that we have, the domains where we have club courses that you can do together. That is the second presentation that we had here which was uh, focusing on the learner demographics and learner profiling as part of NPTEL. Then we looked at the various initiatives that NPTEL has surrounding the NPTEL certification courses. So, this included internships for toppers, faculty development uh, certificates, then we have uh, uh, soft skill training for local chapters, we have the fee waiver uh, support from the CSR of companies and so on. So, we looked at all those uh, initiatives that are kind of aligned with the NPTEL certification courses and the NPTEL ecosystem. So, that was the third part of the presentation that we saw. And the last part is the local chapters or how we partner with colleges and work with colleges uh, to give them uh, direct access to data of learners, of the learners activity in the NPTEL courses from our side and also recognize the local chapters that are doing very well in the NPTEL certification courses. So, we hope you have a better overview now of what we do here. The website has a lot more information about all of this. Please go through the website nptel.ac.in. There is a lot of information on it. Presentations are given, documents are given. I hope you enjoy studying from NPTEL either from the repository which is all free that you can just access anytime or going through a certification on Swayam portal and getting certificates uh, from NPTEL or going through the NPTEL plus portal doing our short term workshops, doing our self paced programs that we are offering there. So, so like they say uh, learning never stops in life or learning is the only constant in life uh, just as it is said it is very true. So, we hope that NPTEL will be able to offer you enough and more opportunities and enough and more interesting courses that you can keep learning at different phases of your life and that you continue your journey with us for as long as you can and hope you can see the benefit in it. And for the students out there, we would say that this is a wonderful opportunity at really no cost for you all to upskill yourself, to make yourselves job ready. To make yourselves ready to access higher education and wherever you want to go and kind of fulfill your dreams. So, NPTEL is the biggest outreach from the IITs and IASC to make the education that we have here absolutely accessible to anybody who is motivated and interested to learn. It is very, very affordable. Most times it is free except for maybe the certification fee that we have for anyone, anywhere around the world. So, please make use of this opportunity and uh, hope to see you sometime as an NPTEL learner and interact with you all. Do share your feedback, anything that you have about NPTEL to our uh, support email ID support at nptel.iitm.ac.in and we would love to hear back from you. Thank you. Madam, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think that was a very robust and very detailed uh, details about the NPTEL workshop.
So, and I hope all the faculty members and as well as the students who have, those who have participated in this workshop have gained the knowledge, have understood what exactly this workshop, what exactly is NPTEL courses going to help us. And I hope many participations may happen from the local chapter of Praxis College. And I hope we get a good certification from the NPTEL. Uh, secondly, I'm very much grateful to uh, Ms. Ms. Bharati Ma'am for our kind deliberations and helping us understand in details about the NPTEL courses. Secondly, I'm very much grateful to our respected principals of Ramanas Kumar Mahanto. Along with him, I quit Kurinatla Ramita Das Ma'am and to all the faculties for joining this program, getting the knowledge and understanding what exactly we, are, we can do and what things that can be uh, learned from these particular courses, and how we can further uh, make the students aware of these courses. Because as we can see, faculties from IITs and IISCs, they are basically teaching in this particular uh, platform. So that would be a very good opportunity for all of us. So lastly, I'm very much thankful to all the team members of local chapter at PTL IIT Madras for giving us this opportunity and helping us in making ourselves aware to the courses and hope we continue getting such support from you all. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.